Bitwig has an amazing scene building environment and I'm not talking about the grid. The modular nature of this DLW lets you build scenes that are crazy powerful and today I'll show you the basis of that. So if you end up liking this video, subscribe to the channel and also leave a like. So without further ado, let's go! When you open up a synthesizer on Bitwig, let's say the Polysynth, you get something that seems pretty basic. You have two oscillators with nice features like sub and syncing, different ways of mixing both oscillators, a filter, a filter envelope, and an amplitude envelope. Not only that, you also have some drive and different drive modes. But that's it. With this, you can get pretty nice sounds, for example. But it's not so powerful, right? Well, Bitwig devices are made with the idea that everything is like a building block, so you can easily add different kinds of modulation, audio and note effects, letting you go from this to this. So let's go step by step. Let's keep using this simple sound on the polysynth. It seems a little bit limited with the modulation options, but what if I want to add an LFO? Well, you just have to press this plus button right here, and if you can see it, you just have to press this little arrow, and then it will show you all the modulations options that you get. So let's choose the LFO, and there we have it. If you click on it, you can see all the LFO options, and if you click this arrow, everything that's now highlighted can be modulated by it. So let's choose the cutoff point, let's increase a little bit Bit and you see that it starts moving. I click again so I stop the mapping and maybe I want to decrease the hertz. You can also go for syncing with the tempo but I'm going to keep it on hertz and there you go. Now as I said you can modulate anything that's highlighted when you press this arrow. So for example I can add another LFO and start modulating this mix knob right here. What's even better is that, as I said, you have all of these different modulators to choose from, like envelopes, random, audio sidechain, and many more. So, of course, the idea is that you don't limit yourself and try to modulate anything that you can think of. So, of course, explore all the options you got and try to modulate anything. But we're missing something, and that is... Bitwig devices are not standalone synths in the sense that you can add effects inside of them. Any Bitwig device will have this type of container right here, for example the effects container, where you can put different devices, even third party. So let's keep using this simple polysynth and let's start adding some classics, for example delay and reverb. So you press here, you have this other blue plus button and you just choose another effect. So all of these effects are going to be inside Polysynth, as you can see here. Not only that, each effect also has some different containers. For example, you can add effects only to the wet signal of the reverb, or maybe you want to add effects on the feedback of the delay. And besides that, you have other type of devices that are containers on themselves that let you split the sound into things like left right mid side and now with the spectral suite even on spectral matters like harmonics and frequency <laughs> Now I could do a whole video about these special containers, but I want to keep this one beginner friendly. If you want me to talk about the containers, let me know in the comments down below. So I want to change this sound and make it a little bit pluckier. And now what I want to add is a staple for many synthesizers, which is an arpeggiator. Bitwig has these devices called note effects that go before a synthesizer. All of these are going to affect the incoming MIDI notes. And here you can find the arpeggiator. So you just choose it and then start playing a chord. The 
It's a preview has the classic parameters you will find, for example, changing the pattern, the octave range, the timing with different options, but you also have this amount of steps. That's because this also can work like a sequencer. You get options for the gate length, the velocity, that can also be a modulator, as you can see here in the expression, and you can skip some steps. Not only that, you can transpose by semitones, 24 up, 24 down, each note to the corresponding step. Here is with just one note. And here is with a chord of three notes. And you can add more steps, so you add more variation to how this transposing is affecting each note. So now you're getting a crazy result. The issue is that now the notes are all over the place, that is that we're not in a scale. To fix that, we can add another note effect, this time the key filter, in which we choose a key, for example, let's keep it C minor, and now we can play a C minor chord, and it's going to stick on it even if we go on a semitone that is not on the scale. you make sure is going to sound pleasant if that's what you want. And you have others like the note transpose where you can change the value by fine-tuning semitones and octaves. This is pretty useful especially for example if you have a complex patch with different synthesizers and different oscillators and you don't want to change each of the pitches you can change the octaves right here. And now we have a more complex synthesizer than the one that we have at the beginning. Now, before we finish, let's go to... What's great about Bitwig is that every third-party plugin will have every parameter mapped to these knobs. So adding modulations to them is really easier and faster than on other DAWs. This is great, especially, for example, if you consider that here you have only two LFOs and maybe you want to add a third one. So you just go to modulators, choose the LFO, then you just move the cutoff point and you can see that it's going to be highlighted here. You just modulate it and you can see that on Diva it's also moving on par with this. <laughs> Not only that, every third-party plugin, being synthesizers or effects, will also have slots for putting effects on a chain that's going to be saved here. It doesn't matter if those are Bitwig devices or third-party plugins. For example, I have here my preset for the SSD sampler, which has all the outputs mapped, and as you can see, every output has its own effects. Not only that, the SSD sampler on its own have a disk subculture after the sum of every output. So obviously this doesn't stop there, but I wanted to keep this video beginner friendly. If you want more advanced techniques to make mega synth in Bitwig, let me know in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to the channel and leave a like, that would mean a lot to me. Thank you for watching, I hope you learned something and I will see you next time, bye bye.